The history of the colonization of North America is among the most well-known stories of nation-building across the globe. Spain, France, and Great Britain all played crucial roles in the development of what is now the influential United States of America. However, today most people primarily remember the colonial efforts of the English above all others. So, how did the English colonize America? To understand how it happened, we must first understand why it happened. Several significant factors influenced England's decision to pursue colonial efforts. A summary of these justifications can be found in the 1584 work of Richard Hakluyt, known as the Discourse on Western Planting. Hakluyt argued that English colonization of the New World would not only benefit England, but also serve the interests of God. He made the case that Protestant England needed to rescue North America from the Catholic world, specifically from the dominance Spain held over much of the continent. Of course, England and Spain had more than just a religious rivalry, but the point was compelling nonetheless. Furthermore, Hakluyt recognized the obvious economic and social opportunities opportunities that New World colonies could provide. England was plagued by an overabundance of jobless and landless vagabonds, and Hakluyt suggested that establishing a colony would offer more land and job opportunities for these homeless men and women. Moreover, the expansion of trade would yield great profits for England, and the resources available in the New World were vast. These points made by Richard Hakluyt resonated throughout England, and combined with the visible success of the Spanish, they began to spark envy among the English. A decision was made to enter the New World. Queen Elizabeth chose a less conventional route for joining the colonial world by sponsoring sailors known as sea dogs who participated in a form of piracy called privateering. Two such sailors, John Hawkins and Francis Drake, were sent by the Queen to wreak havoc on the Spanish in America. The privateers, particularly Drake, plundered Spanish ships and raided caravans, reaching as far as the coast of Peru. This unprovoked attack greatly angered Spain, and the discord between the nations escalated even further after England executed the Catholic Mary, Queen of Scots, in 1587. The following year, King Philip II of Spain decided to retaliate with what would become the largest scale invasion yet attempted, with the goal of annihilating the British Navy. The Spanish Armada boasted 18,000 soldiers, 8,000 sailors, and 130 ships. The Spaniards made no mistake in targeting the British Navy, which played an extremely crucial role in the nation's trade and colonial power. Although the Spanish fleet outnumbered the British, the latter had better equipped ships for such a clash, and quickly repelled their attackers. The Spanish fleet turned back heading for the Netherlands to gather reinforcements. But an unexpected storm ripped through the remaining Armada ships, leaving the English as the clear victors. With the defeat of the Spanish Armada, it was time for England to focus on establishing colonies. As the 16th century drew to a close, England had already made some attempts to establish colonies in North America, but none had succeeded. Sir Humphrey Gilbert was one of the men leading such efforts, hoping to create a colony in Newfoundland, but his attempt ended in failure. In 1587, John White made a similar attempt on Roanoke Island, Island, alongside 150 other English colonists, but the colony quickly ran out of supplies and resources. White returned to England intending only to gather what was needed for his colony before heading back, but he ended up trapped in his native land for over a year due to the Spanish Armada's threat. When White finally returned to Roanoke Island, he found his colony completely abandoned and his efforts were in vain. As the 17th century began, with still no solid English colony in the Americas, Queen Elizabeth passed away in 1603, leaving the future of England's colonial efforts in the hands of King James. The following year, peace was made between England and Spain, and in 1606, King James established the Virginia Company, beginning a new wave of efforts to find colonial success in America. Three ships in particular, the Discovery, the Susan Constant, and the Godspeed, set off for the East Coast, arriving at the James River in the spring of 1607. The colonists reached the relatively uninhabited region of Virginia, which they shortly named Jamestown. This would become the first permanent English colony in America. Simultaneously, King James granted a charter to the Plymouth Company, but their Popham colony was disappointingly short-lived. Although the Jamestown colonists fared better than those from Popham, given that their colony didn't collapse, the endeavor was still a harrowing one. By 1617, only 351 of the initial 17,000 colonists remained alive. The men were largely unprepared for the hard physical labor required, and the land was not as easy to utilize as they had hoped. Many starved while others fell ill and if it had not been for the help of the local Native American tribe, known to the colonists as the Powhatan Confederacy, the English may have perished entirely. Powhatan's roughly 10,000-strong tribe was incredibly efficient at utilizing the difficult terrain for hunting and farming throughout the Chesapeake region. With more than enough food and potential benefits to gain from the colonists' manufactured goods, the natives were fairly welcoming and greatly assisted the sickly Englishmen during their first winter. In the years to come, however, matters became more complicated. 
the English continued to starve and succumb to disease despite the help from the natives. In 1609, 400 new settlers arrived in Jamestown, but the general well-being of the colony continued to deteriorate and their relationship with the natives began to sour. Occasional guerrilla wars broke out between the colonists and Powhatan's tribe, and the English continued to starve. The fate of Jamestown seemed bleak, and no major improvement occurred until 1614 when Powhatan's daughter, Pocahontas, married an English colonist named John Roll. This marriage helped ease tensions between the English and the natives, and the colony began to see some new changes in leadership. The discovery of what would become their savior, tobacco, played a significant role in the colony's survival. The Jamestown colonists were rescued by a booming demand for tobacco, which was native to the New World and immensely popular from the start of its first exports to Europe. Within 40 years, Jamestown's tobacco exports reached 15 million pounds per year. The colony had suddenly transformed from a dwindling, starving group of migrants to a rapidly growing colonial power in need of more workers to support the expanding market. As Jamestown's success continued to grow, the colonists began expanding English territory beyond its original borders, which unfortunately brought them back into conflict with the natives. Powhatan's brother succeeded the chief upon his death in 1622 and vowed to rid his land of the English. On March 22, 1622, he and his tribe attacked the colony and massacred 347 colonists in a single day. However, in the minds of the English, this justified years of fierce brutality against the natives. The new method of English colonization in America was vastly different from how their competitors, both the French and Spanish, had done the same. The English had received some practice in sharpening the skills they would use in America when they began their efforts to take Ireland from the native Catholics. As the English decided they no longer needed to put much effort into coexisting with or assimilating the natives into their colonies, they began utilizing violence violence to seize land and take control. Between war and disease, it wasn't long before the Native Americans were disastrously affected. There was also a growing distinction in the eyes of the colonists between themselves and other peoples, making them even more determined to establish English dominance throughout North America. As their view of the natives deteriorated, the existing supremacy of English Protestantism over Spanish Catholicism extended beyond religion, and the English had the power to enforce these ideas. With this power, the English established more colonies with even greater success than they had previously achieved. Eventually, Virginia, Massachusetts, New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Delaware, Maryland, Connecticut, South Carolina, North Carolina, New Hampshire, Rhode Island, and Georgia made up the 13 English colonies that would later form the United States of America. If it had not been for the newfound tobacco industry in the original colony, it's likely that the English would have never been able to permanently colonize North America. The demoralization from their early failures might have prevented any further success or even attempts at trying again. Instead, the English established multiple booming colonies, brought impressive profits to the crown, and boasted enormous economic success. 